Hello and welcome. This is just a brief follow-up on this radiometer BKF-10 distortion analyzer that had died on me. And initially when I turned this thing on all of the meters were just randomly swinging back and forth. And it hadn't been on, turned on in quite a while. However, I had left it on for couple of hours and never settled down so I assumed something had died. I didn't have any extender boards for it and a couple of very good friends of mine who watched this video and hello to Sky and hello to Charlie I can't tell you how much I appreciate the great deal of effort you guys put in built me some extender boards. Now this is not what Charlie does for a living Charlie repairs amateur radio equipment and uh, here in New Hampshire and I'm going to give him a shout out it's New Hampshire Radio Works he has uh, a website which currently isn't working as of uh, November 27th 2020 it's broken but he has given me permission to give out his phone number if you have some ham radio equipment that needs work on. It's Charlie at 603-689-8105. And uh, he can take care of you. Charlie's a very reliable guy, although I suspect he's going to get quite buried. <laughs> Sorry, Charlie. But I do have his permission to give his, his name and uh, phone number. I doubt, however, they are interested in making more extender boards. Uh, if you call them up and say I have an XYZ and I need extender boards, they won't have any idea what the pin spacing is, yada yada. Now I have machine shop experience. I was able to give him very, very precise dimensions, he and Sky. And uh, even at that, they called me back over the course of a couple of weeks, two or three times to verify uh, the pin layout and everything else just to make sure this was going to fit. This I'm sure was not an easy job. They put an extensive amount of work into these and uh, were you to buy a set of these custom made it's you know I'm sure that I'm sure Charlie has more pressing work let's put it that way but if you have ham radio problems uh, give him a call and uh, in the New Hampshire area. All right back to the unit here <clears throat> I got the extender boards from him, set the unit up, and turned it on, and I was warming up my second harmonic analyzer, my Hewlett Packard, because I wanted to determine was, you know, some of the problem in the oscillator, some of the problem in the distortion meter, I wanted to nail it down to a section. And while I was getting th everything up and set up, I noticed all the meters had settled down and left it on overnight and everything stayed settled down. We're about a week on now and I keep turning it on daily and running it for a few hours and it won't screw up. All I've managed to do to this is replace the potentiometer that fell apart in the first video and the only thing that did was uh, or that function for that pot was just the calibration of the analog frequency meter. I've touched up that calibration and every test I've run on this shows that it's working perfectly at this point. So I've got nothing to show you uh, but I just you know I've had several inquiries as to where it's gone what's been happening with this. It's not broken I can't fix it if it's not broken you can probably hear its fan whirring away in the background here. I've seen behavior like this uh, on other equipment very similar to this. In fact, up here in the background, let me zoom in and try to do this slowly. And uh, trying to do this one handed while I reach around the camera here. I have several of these Heathkit VOMs, uh, they're transistorized. Uh, volt ohm uh, milliamp meters. I've built three of those over the years and they all exhibit a similar behavior. If you haven't used them in a week or a month and you turn them on, the meters will slam hard against the hard stop. 
and you think something's broken but if you just let them sit for an hour they settle down and they're fine and they've done that since they were new uh, it's not like the capacitors are dying I, I suspect it's the very old transistors from the early 70s just aren't well balanced and until they warm up a little bit once it warms up it's perfectly accurate and stable and works just fine and in fact if you leave it on 24 7 it's perfect but if you shut it off for a month it's going to take a good hour's warm up before the meter settles back down to the zero stop so it just may be that I haven't used this thing and I hadn't used this particular meter in probably a year so it just may be it needs to be run constantly I don't know and I, you know, this thing is from the uh, early 80s, so who knows. <clears throat> so that's it. Uh, I've got nothing more to show on this. I wish I had something exciting in the way of a repair. There's just nothing more I can tell you. It's working fine. It's uh, according to the uh, service manual. It's meeting specifications. It's working perfectly. I just, you know, I have nothing. So again, if you need ham radio repair, I used to do that, but I'm retired and between jumping here to Thailand and back, I've kind of backed away unless it's somebody I know who's local and says, can you do me a favor? I'm trying not to get the shack loaded up with repair equipment anymore. But give Charlie a call here in New Hampshire, 603-689-8105 at New Hampshire Radio Works, and I'm sure he can take care of you. And again, thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Sky. I can't tell you how much I appreciate the effort you guys put in. It was all for naught, evidently. Well, no, that's not true either. Uh, I did use the extender card, one of the extender cards, to recalibrate the input frequency meter. And uh, it wouldn't have been possible without it because the potentiometer trim pot that I replaced is a 10 turn trim pot now it was originally just one of those small well you saw in the video the broken one this style here and uh, I can't get to this 10 turn one unless it's on an extender card so I did use one of the extender cards that's it short and sweet uh, thanks for watching and make sure you contact Charlie if you need anything see you soon